So I'm 11 years old and I buy myself my first ever bag of veggie chips. <laughs> At school, I decided to spend my $2 and share with my friends while we're walking and talking outside in the cloudy weather and we're enjoying ourselves walking and then some girl that I had never seen before in my life snatched it out of my hands, spit in it, and crushed it in her hands and then threw it to the ground and stepped on it. Now there's something you need to know about me at this point. At this point, I'm wearing the same black sweater every day and I'm a little bit chubby and I'm very quiet, very basic, stereotypical little kid, right? And uh, with my little mustache that I probably should have started shaving when I was 11 because I'm Latino. <laughs> and so I was very insecure and I didn't really fight back for myself. So that's not even the worst part. <laughs> the worst part was that after she did this, a supervisor that had seen me walking around with my friends with this bag of veggie chips now on the floor next to me, right in front of me, she looks at me, pick it up. And it's not just that, she's like, right, she starts going off. I don't know what it is about these elementary school teachers. For some reason, they are so angry to be around themselves. Let me plug in my mic so that you can hear me a little bit better. So. She tells me to go pick this bag up and I'm just thinking in my head, whoa, <laughs> bro, this is kind of shitty. <laughs> this, this sucks. And can you guess what I did? I picked it up. For many years, I did not fight back. And for many years, this type of thing kept happening. But that was the last straw that I, I said to myself after, I'm never going to let anything like that ever happen again. Throughout the years, I had to learn this lesson. But integrity, moral integrity, is not harmlessness. It's having the capability of causing pain, having that strength, and simply deciding not to let it out because of love. I thought it, I might be a better person if I just let people do their thing. And truth be told, that is weak. It just is. And not saying that in a terrible way, but there's a difference between fighting back and being weak, fighting back and not being able to fight back. Now, the one of them is a choice of strength, a choice of overcoming these thoughts, these emotions, and fighting back because you love yourself. Now, the other one is because you don't respect yourself enough to actually fight back. In every endeavor, you will be tested like this. Because if you let this type of thing slide, it's not just in the way other people treat you, it's how the world treats you. Imagine the kind of guy that lets people walk all over him. Imagine how the world treats him. He lets things slide. He wakes up late. He doesn't give everything that he can give. He's tired all the time. And when I say fighting back with true strength, I don't mean some big hunk of King Kong, whatever, some brute setting like he's on top of the universe. I mean, really noticing that you've been disrespected noticing that you've been cheated and like fighting back because you know that you don't deserve that now it can hard it can be hard to feel like you deserve more because you kind of just don't have it in you you feel like because of certain external things like looks or fatigue or whatever it may be you feel like you almost have this level of lowness now in every endeavor like i said you will be tested and you will fall to the level of disrespect fall to the level of pain that you will allow have in your life so next time that asshole disrespects you or that person who's close to you ignores you or life itself hits you don't make it easy and it doesn't even have to be with your big strong muscles it can just literally be with words just even a look and don't even wait to fight back fighting back does not need to be with your fists whatever once you do it you just really need to do it once or even twice people they weren't particularly kind to me they kind of ignored me or whatever i mean it's understandable to not talk at all and be ignored that's totally fine but a lot of the time when people did interact with me, they interacted with me in ways that weren't very particularly kind. After this experience where this girl spit in my food and just, bro, what a waste of food. <laughs> I could have eaten that. Somebody could have eaten that. The next time that something like that happened, I was at my locker. I was just putting some stuff away as I did in elementary school. And there was this guy who was going around and he was kicking the backs of people's knees, which is weird because why? <laughs> why? <laughs> and so I was putting my stuff away and I just, I don't know, I assumed that he wouldn't 
be coming over to me because it just didn't make sense. And then he did. It was kind of this, this switch that flipped back then when that girl had spit in my food. I kind of just let that happen and felt horrible. It had just totally powerless. I decided I would never let that happen ever again. That's when right after it happened, I totally like jumped to the side and I looked at him and I didn't even have to say anything. I didn't even have to do anything. You literally just need to look at someone with that look as in no, what are you doing? Are you stupid? How dare you? And bro literally ran. <laughs> bro literally ran. I remember I was feel I was 11 years old and I felt like a king, dude. Cuz bro ran. He was afraid. The next time, and this is kind of crazy. This was even like a different girl. Some other girl spit in my cranberry Canada dry and it was after Thanksgiving and I had really been looking forward to have the last one. She spit in it and I was pissed so I just simply poured it over her head. She deserved it and there was nothing wrong with that. She never did anything like that again. In fact, she treated with me she treated me with more respect afterward because you can't let people walk all over you. It's just why would you do that to yourself? You don't feel good when it happens and other people look down on you when you let that happen. And even, I will tell you, it will happen occasionally, but it will happen less. And the more you stay true to this almost aura of no, you do not treat me like that because that is unacceptable, the less it will happen. So I remember, I would say like a month ago, I was on the bus, I was taking the bus and I was doing all my work because I'm so productive. <laughs> no, literally, it's hard to focus on the bus. But anyways, I was trying to. And this group of kids were throwing around a pencil randomly a pencil and i remember looking up and seeing this guy like playing with a pencil and like throwing it down and then throwing it back to his buddies and then suddenly like five minutes later i'm working on my stuff and dunk <laughs> to the sound of the truck passing by i don't know if you heard but dunk and immediately no more smile. Not because it disturbed my peace wholly, because frankly, I don't really mind so much what happens externally, but because I know I can't let that slide, because if I let that slide, then I, what else do I let slide in my life? Immediately, I looked up at the guy and he was laughing before and then he just kind of stopped laughing. And that in itself felt pretty good. Sometimes you just need a steady gaze. And I kind of went forwards a little bit and I asked him, do you know that guy who threw the pencil? With no disrespect, simply with no disrespect, I asked him that. And he said, yeah. And then I asked him, well, is he a good man? And sad thing was really, this actually made me feel a little bit bad for the other guys. He said, probably not. And that was his friend, bro. How was he gonna say that about his friend? And literally all of it just kind of dissolved and they stopped throwing around the pencil. They stopped being like super, super loud. <laughs> you really kind of just sometimes need to assert yourself. Internalize though, you have no enemies. Don't go looking for fights like a dummy. <laughs> Some guys do this after so long, they start actually like, like, you know, when they start fighting back after they've had so much uh, hits to them, not necessarily physically, but just psychologically. A lot of times, and I went through this too, I almost looked for fights because there, there's a stage you might go through when you're kind of uh, asserting yourself and kind of respecting yourself a little bit more. You don't let any level of disrespect happen. And that's valid. However, really remember that you have no enemies. Sometimes you can convince yourself that you do, but truthfully, you just need to sometimes put people in their places and they will respect you more for doing that. And you'll respect yourself more too. And if words of love don't work, maybe fists of love might. <laughs> and careful that you don't become that asshole because really you, it's like, it's easy because you wanna increase your arsenal, if you will. You wanna make yourself stronger and more powerful. This is your actionable step. I could tell you all the nitty gritty and I will tell you later in other videos or whatever, but my recommendation is that you just start exercising. You start working on your body, building yourself up so that you are more of a physically powerful force because even though you shouldn't really even ever need to use it, you still kind of have that. So I will link this app that I used for many, many years. And when I started exercising, it was called lose weight in 30 days. And I've literally just done that app like uh, repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. I went from, uh, after I hit day 30, I went day 21 to 30 and again, progressively overload, but don't even worry about that now. Just start exercising and worry about all that crazy stuff later. 99% of other guys watching this, and I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to you. You can prove to me and yourself that you can build yourself. Be that 1% guy who actually isn't just all talk, who actually 
will make a change for themselves because come on dude this is where self-respect starts you need to actually build yourself up and i'm giving you some tough love this almost sounds like a little bit a little bit shitty for me to say but i don't respect you if you don't respect yourself and it's the same for other people i love you man and you need to feel that love. You need to show that love to yourself. Or else, how do you expect other people to do that for you? Just start and forget about it until like, I don't even know, like forget about it for months. And then suddenly you're going to come back to it and like look in the mirror and you're going to be like, oh, some stuff actually changed. <laughs> Two men, they're about to fight. One looks at the other like he just stole the last stole <laughs> the last sample from him at Costco. And the other one looks at him and he's afraid of hitting him because of his morality. One knows he's powerful and the other one believes he is powerless. He's afraid that if he actually does fight this guy, he's not going to win. And the other guy, dude, the other guy, he knows he's strong, arrogant almost. He's ready to fight. He knows he's going to win. He just knows. And who wins? Who wins? The answer might surprise you. <laughs> I had to. The first guy. Bro, it's the first guy, of course, for sure. I used to confuse harmlessness or letting things run their course with morality and integrity and like doing everything to suppress that monster because I was afraid that if I let it out, I would go too far. Or if I let out some of that monster, I would not be a good man. But you need to have that monster and you need to channel it with love in everything you do. This good guy and good with quotation marks, because really what is good? And this bad guy, they need to become one or else really you're powerless. What really can you do? What is your gift that you can give? This will give you that cutting edge passion in every facet of your life so that when life hits you with that perfectly perfect form kick, you can take it and that you can fight back like a champion and let life know that whatever it hits you with, you will come back and you will not tolerate it. And this guy who just is arrogant, he knows he's going to win this fight. He wins because he has this high ego. He holds his identity to a standard of respect because this self that he's come to rationalize had to find a way to actually feel good about himself because he forgot about the one who he was, the you that behind what you're hearing and feeling and thinking right now, the you that is just observation, he forgot about him and had to feel good about himself like that. Now, high, having a high self-esteem is very worth it and important. You will have to have that to become more powerful. You need to respect yourself. But imagine the guy who wins the fight and believes he's all that. Will he continue to practice? Probably not because he believes he's already good. And even look at it the other way. Will he really truly look at people the same way with love? Or will he just look at them like ants? What kind of thing is that? Why would you want to be around a person that didn't truly actually magnify love in every single way and every single thing that they did? There is a balance between self-absorbed narcissism, having a high ego and thinking that you're all that and humanity. Now, angels become demons when they fall from love. So if you want to bring back a demon to angel, angelic perfection, excellence, you need to apply all of these negative emotions, all of this high ego that you're going to get after you start working on yourself to love. And even this high ego of having this insecurity, trying to find all those little things that you don't like about yourself, identifying with these things being the same as the one who you are after behind all that fluff. You need to bring all of that back to love. Now, basically what that means is that those negative, negative labeled emotions or personality traits that come from working on yourself and becoming more powerful, especially from a place of perceived weakness will become integrity when you love. Arrogance, in this case, would become confidence, for example. When you start working on yourself, because that's entirely important. When you start working on yourself, I've <clears throat> heard of this ego bell curve. Now, I'll draw it for you. That's what it looks like, where you start very low ego and almost um, self-deprecating or whatever that you start working on yourself, you start seeing results and you get this high ego. And now after a bit, you get this low ego again, this low self-importance and you almost become what more meek or a better person. I wouldn't say that we can really put a measurement on a better person because even good people do bad things. However, this graph that I had seen before, it was, it felt false. It, it didn't really seem right because if 
you think you've got a high ego, you've got a high ego. But if you think you've got a low ego, you've got a high ego because you can't really put a label on it. Putting a label on it, even this graph itself, separating yourself from the one who you are, who is simply just being, who is simply just stillness. If you think it's low, it's actually high. So it's contradictive. So I decided to put another label on it yet again. And I created this integrity balance bell curve. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good with names, but basically this is what it looks like. So you start off in the ground, you feel a little bit powerless, but as you go up and you start working on yourself, that power, it must be balanced. It must meet love. So once you got this power and this love, that becomes integrity. Integrity is the balance of this power and love. So integrity, that is the foundation to everything you do in life. All of your greatness comes from this gift that you can give to others. You've got to know you're strong and have the capacity to pulverize everything in your way and decide when you want to let that out in everything in your life. Integrity is where love meets power. You've got to love yourself enough to keep working harder and harder and not just for yourself, but for all the other people around you. Once you've got some power, apply love and just be remember you're here to give to give everything you've got and to give your gift of love the world and others this selflessness this integrity is where a great man meets the world not just a good man a great man a great man who changes the world now this develops with time and surely I am not there yet. Not at all. You will be. And you've got this, man. You've got so much to give and you don't even realize it. Every week, and this is entirely important, every single week, you need to dedicate a couple minutes of solitude and stillness and just sit next to this graph in observation. Think about what your deepest core says whispers in your ear. Do you need to become more powerful for yourself, for those around you? Do you need to become more loving toward the world, yourself or others? more warm? Or do you just need to let go a little bit? Are you taking things too seriously and forgetting the source of your being? Just sit there in silence and see what the one who you are whispers in your ear. Because with all the little clouded things, things that you are clouding your vision with, like videos, like music, like movies, food, all of that distracts you from really what you've got to hear and what you got to learn and the one who you are already has experienced that and he needs you to learn he needs you to grow this practice is called humility now humility sometimes sounds like this this bad thing like you don't want to be humiliated but humility is entirely purposeful and crucial to your development because you need to love yourself enough to know that you are lacking truthfully you probably are in many different areas and it hurts to say it almost feels like like I'm insulting you saying that, but truthfully, I'm just saying this for your betterment because I care about you. I became pretty full of myself the first year I had started working on my body and my social skills because I had been very, very quiet. And then suddenly I was getting all this attention and I thought I was pretty great. And truth is, is that I'm just me. And I had been identifying with this, this, this validation from other people that didn't really, wasn't really for me. Now, before this validation had manifested its way into insecurity and whatever, now this validation now manifested again into insecurity, but because I had felt like I was all that. The guy who, in the analogy of the two guys fighting, the guy who wins the fight is the guy who's more arrogant, more angry, more full of himself. But really, truthfully, he doesn't really win because in the end, he realizes at the end of his life that none of it really mattered and that he really could have given his gift more and he could have loved so much more. And again, neither does the one who loves fully without loving himself enough to make himself more powerful. The meek and meekness is, I don't know if that's the word, meekness <laughs> is very valid in the sense that you can love from that place a lot better and and agree with yourself that you've got room to grow but you've got to actually grow you've got to have that self-respect to actually treat yourself with that and you can give your gift with this foundation of integrity you'll get that gift back you can give that gift just simply be a man of integrity and without power and integrity you can't become a great man and you're very capable of becoming a great man. All right, what you got to take away from this video? Integrity is having the capability to cut through everything in your way and deciding just how much you should let out that part of you with a conscious decision anchored in love. Now work on yourself to become more powerful.
Start with your body. Be a man of power and integrity by approaching everything with your conscious love. All of your greatness comes from this place and love yourself enough to know that you've got a long way to go. <laughs> we all do. I certainly do. Because why else would you be here? I was literally just in your shoes a couple years ago. You can go very, very far. Don't think that you change a lot because you really don't. Remember the one who you are. I don't want to be that guy, but <laughs> consider subscribing if you found this helpful because I've got a lot more to say. I got you, man. I love you entirely. See you later, bro. Tiger.